All right, everybody. Welcome back to another amazing episode of the I Do Ya Podcast. Man, you know I love bringing a little man's voice into it. And this week's episode started off pretty heavy. And if you stick around to listen, trust me, there's a lot, a lot of insight given. And it's well worth it. Uh, we talked about death. Um, kind of just started out with uh, Lou's uncle recently passing. And he was talking about how he's been able to deal with it. And that led into me asking the question, a personal question on my end, actually, of how he's been able to get better at that. Because that's one thing I've noticed for myself uh, after my grandpa passed away, that death has just always been a very hard and scary thing. And I think it is for most of us. And I think it's very important that it's it's not. Uh, and Lou has some some pretty amazing insight to give on that. So make sure you stick around. It's it's very well worth it. It starts out very, very heavy. Like I said, it lightens up. And we even lighten it up more with getting into, of course, some skate talk. We talked about our three favorite tricks. Um, I'm even going to put forth some effort to try to do, do some of the tricks and film some of them. We'll see how it all goes. We'll, we'll find out when the episode drops and it's all in video form. But uh, yeah, and then from there, we got into uh, just talking about, actually, I gave a little bit of tip on how you can uh, get a little bit better at learning tricks or being more consistent at the tricks that you're learning. So make sure you stay around for that part of the episode. If you're having any trouble learning tricks, learn one trick, you do it and you come back the next day and you're like, damn, I can't do it. Got a little tip for you there. And of course, before we start this episode, I got to give a shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to Third Layer Skate Park and Skate Shop. We love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Third Lair is honestly just a home, a straight home for skateboarders. It has been a home for me and so many others. And all they look to do is give back to the skate community and help the skate community grow however they can. So make sure you go show the love. Go skate. Go buy some stuff. Go shop. You got Monte Coastal Skateboards. Boom. I'm still skating. Still skating the most recent board y'all made. And I've been skating that thing hard. No chips, no cracks, no pressure cracks. Tail still has plenty of pop. So I'm telling you, you want a board that's going to be durable and last, make sure you go check out Monte Coso Skateboards. And last but not least, thank you, Batch Roasting Co. I always got you in my cup when we hop on the cast, when I get up in the morning, before I train. It's absolutely amazing coffee. So if you want to check out any of these amazing companies, make sure you check out the show notes below. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy this week's episode. All about mentality. Like your mental state, your power of your mind, it amazes you what you could do. And this is a lady who's 84 now, just lost her oldest Mm -hmm. son. So she's buried two sons in her lifetime. She's buried... She buried three husbands, but uh, hold on. It's not that typical, like, they just disappeared. Like, they straight died on her. Like, she she didn't always get with the yeah. best type of guys. They were doing some shit. But anyway, and she's got, like, my, she's got my mom now, you know? And she's just yep. at the point where she's gangster with everything. Like, yo, I don't give a fuck anymore. But what's crazy yeah. is how she's, like, she's energetic. She's live. She has her moments where she's just sitting there, like, almost looking lost. But she's there. She's in conversation. She's literally looked at me. She's like, yo, it's so crazy the power of our mind of what it gets us to do. Cause she's sitting there. She's now making the reservations, booking at all the hotel, all this shit, like to get us down to Florida to bury him. And she was, we're not, this mm-hmm. was so gangster about my family too, bro. He told his wife before he bounced. Yeah. when I go one, I want to be cremated Two, I want to have a party. Don't have no fucking funeral. You're going to have a party yep. and it's going to be Dallas Cowboy football, uh, themed so we're all gonna be we're going to florida to have a party dressed in cowboys uniforms to like send them off like he was just always that type of dude like yeah so it's just wild though like she's so right how the mental and then you know and if you look around we're crumbling a lot of people are crumbling over uh a lot less than that. And it's like, is that now the times? Is that the people? What is it? What's the difference? You know, she does. She came yeah. through in a much different time. Different time. Much different time. She's 84 right now in 2022. I'm not the best at, best at math, but that's like 1930s or something. She was born, yeah. you know? So she came up in a much different time. And now to lose both sons 
in her lifetime and like that and like still keep it going not like oh, i just want to die no no, no no she's still gonna work like all that shit is just so wild like yo the mind really is people can crumble over much smaller because now like you can i get i think i feel you can sit here and almost get like judgmental with it where it's like oh people crumble over nothing when like shorty lost two kids sons that's that's like that's it like after that it's like all right after the death part where no one's coming back, you're like, oh, so my uh, my depression, is that really, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, do you think, too, like she even said that? Because she was, I could see it, like, with that, you know, going, you know, through passing my own, like, people passing my own life, and I couldn't even imagine my kids, right, sitting, I'm sure, like you were saying, she's sitting there and gets in that state where she's just, like, just staring off, like, you can tell she's sad or whatever, but then she must be so strong because then she to say that she must recognize that comes out of it and then gets shit done and then is like happy and energetic again so i think that's that's a solid ass point to make because yeah. right now when you think about it like you said so so many people are literally just falling apart mm-hmm. from stuff that it seems like in that moment for them it's just the worst but it, it's hard to like take yourself out of that moment if you don't, if you aren't aware of it, like, and then you just get stuck there and then it's just that like almost self pity ride, exactly right? Where you're just like, like me, 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 poor me. And it's not to say like it happens, like I get it, but that mental, like working on that, that's, what's going to get you out of that. That's the important part. Like, that's what we're trying to say. Yeah, you, <laughs> it's not that like, Hey, you can, you can be there. I think we've all gotten to that point before in our lives. Like, Oh, me, me, me. Why is this? Why is this happening? But then like, you gotta at one point hit that switch. If you don't want to feel that way and be like, look, like, all right, this is, this is, this is the way it can be. And this is the way it can be. Which one do I want? And yeah, go from there. It's, it's the way I look at it too. It's it's like uh the the brain and the mental state is like anything that where you want to grow in a sense of uh like yeah. like all right, if you're in the gym right and you you like yo I want to squat three fifteen and you're at one thirty five you're gonna get to three fifteen by increasing that weight eventually right adding stress and then adapting and becoming the person that can squat to three fifteen just mm-hmm. same concept of the mind of when we go through strife, like especially in childhood, if we go, if we keep letting kids go through zero and then peel them up every time they show any type of ADHD or any type of just, I don't want to pay attention to the shit you're telling me, teacher. Very common in kids. No, we don't want to sit in fucking classrooms. Everyone acts like that's what we're here to do. When a kid acts up a little bit, he has ADHD. You know what? I'm not going to go there. But if we run from these things, instead of trying to get stronger through them, it's just not i don't think it's great like you'll never get to that 315 you'll never land that trick if you if you can't get past the upsetting part of not landing your first ollie you're never gonna skate in your life if you can't get past your first rejection in in a breakup you're never gonna go date again like think what are you gonna how are you gonna live if you can't get past these moments and then you can't even know how strong you are to maybe be someone who loses two kids and keeps it pumping you don't know because you're because we get so scared of what uncertainty and the possibilities of what could happen death is it if you have your like your uh your balancing sheet kind of i can't think of the right terminology but if you have like your deciding factor like for me like i wake up i i don't have a text message to no one that mom brother anyone at the meeting house is dead we're cool mm-hmm. you know just lost the uncle but I you know, I know we're all gonna go. I do this a lot think about it meditate on it so like when i lose someone yeah. it's more hmm Okay, because I get it, but we got to build that strength up because, you know, it's just, it sucks too. Every time you like, you go through tr- strife and it's, it's that, whew, it doesn't have to be that, that, that horror that it is for a lot of people. You can, you know, you can get stronger at that and then be the, the, like the light for someone else that's going through it. Like that was always my pops. Like when people died, like he managed he he set the funerals up he did all the paperwork all the shit he was the strong and then he handled it the way he handled it by himself you know it's the same concept like but even further to be able to handling right there in front of everyone just not in such a way you know being the light for everyone and then they can see a possibility to be different as well you know and take things in a, in a different light you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's I, I think it's so crazy to me like you're 
first off, you brought the ADHD thing. I remember my mom, she told me like when I was younger, they tried to get me with that all the time. Every my mom kid. was like, hell no. She, he's a kid. <laughs> Let him be a kid. I don't, I'm not giving him this shit. He's a kid. Son, he's going to go be a kid. Son, I just, and she would get so mad at the teachers because the teacher would be like, oh, he's a, yeah, they'd be, oh, he's a class clown, this and that. And, and then they, my mom would ask, how does he do on his test? 100%. Yeah, motherfucker, I'm listening. It's not that and I'm not listening. they still try to do that. They'd still try to talk shit. So, and it's like, nah, dude, I'm listening. I just am bored. <laughs> I'm just bored. That sucks. It's not me. Yeah, like, you, su- Debbie, bored. you 25-year-old teacher, yeah. you suck at life. <laughs> yeah, get out of my face. <laughs> I'm more entertained by a piece of wood with four wheels on it. Go away. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, dude, that was it, too. Like literally, I would just and that's I don't know. I've heard like I've heard this before. I think maybe I was listening to, like Mind Pump or something. But they had somebody on and they were talking about how like when you're a kid, like the class clowns are usually like they usually are actually like de- smarter than most people think. And like that's just like the funny part is like I was the kid getting suspended for just like saying a dick joke or like writing a dick on the whiteboard, some crazy just stupid thing. But I was also the one like acing all my tests, which is just like cracks me up. And the whole time I'm just thinking like, all right, do this, do this. All right, skate. I'll just sit there. Skateboard, 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 skateboard. But another thing I wanted to ask you was how did, how did you get to that point of being able to deal with death like that? Because that's something uh, I'm asking you pretty much from a personal standpoint because oh, when my, when my grandpa passed, like I... I went off the deep end. Like yeah. I've said it before on the podcast. Like that was one of the hardest times in my life personally. Like looking back on it too, like been through a lot since then and before that. Like that moment itself, just like the significance of like watching it happen and then like the after effect, like instantly broke a mirror in a, in in the hospital and then from there just kept going and spiraling for like at least six months. And now I think about death and like at times like I <clears throat> I know it's gonna happen, but I'll sit there and like, it'll hit me. Like, I'll be like, damn, my grandma's going to die, bro. And I'll get like teary eyed. I got teary eyed when I knew my fucking, uh, my dog buddy, my, the dog that passed away we put down recently. I was like, damn, he's going to die one day. I started getting all teary eyed. I was like, damn, how do you, how do you, how do you be more comfortable with that feeling? I guess. Cause it's not like running. It's like, you know, you can't, you can't get away from it, obviously. But how are, how did you get to a point of being comfortable? Cause that's something I want to be able to do for my family because Jojo's very like a very, very like strong emotion person. And like somebody passes, like she's the, she's, she's crying. Like regardless, like it's going to be a thing um, unless there's somebody like there. And I know like I've always been that person, but it's more been like a fake there because I've been also holding back like my feelings of like, Oh oh my God, like the world's going to end. How did you get there, man? I'm interested. Well, When my uncle died was definitely the, the spilling point for me. Like, but my the first uncle, my mom's younger, younger brother, because he was like a he was like a best friend style. Like I never looked up to okay. like I looked up to my pops to be to get shit done and be mm-hmm. fucking nuts if I had to. Like that's yeah. what I would do. Like that's what I look up to him for, and mm-hmm. to raise a family type shit. But then my uncle was that cool. He was everything to me. Like he was suave. He got with the girl. He was. He had it. He had the mustard. Like he had flavor. He had the style. He yeah. was. And, and my whole life growing up, like I was like seven. He let me be Batman. He was Robin, and he was like seventeen. You know what I mean? Like it was just that relationship because he was my mom's younger yeah. brother. Mm-hmm. And when he died at a left field, and I was already dabbling with doing drugs and shit with pills. I was always doing drugs, but I mean addiction of pills, and that was it. Mm-hmm. It was just whoosh, down it, and it was, and that was right after I got kicked out of the Marines. So like, being kicked out of the Marines sucked, but at least I have Uncle there. And I was like, I'll bet now I'm chilling with him again. Like this is cool. I still had that in the back of my head, but then once he went, it was like a cascade of shit. So then I went through the, all the drug addiction, the jail, the bubble bo. So him, that like th- that catalyst, what happened with him, set me up to be where I'm at now, because I had to make a choice. It was like, are you either gonna keep, you're gonna either die in jail. And then what? Your parents, your everyone else, for what? Or you're gonna be who you who you have an idea you could possibly be in this life. Some some shit I always felt within me, mm. you know. And then you make the move. But then to do that, like I now go to religious scriptures and I read things like that. I listen to Ram Dass every single day because this Western world will keep you petrified of death 
Let's all we want to do is make sure we're never going to die. That's why we keep trying to go to space. Fuck Earth. Let's just go to space. Do all, you know, a hurricane can wipe you out. A tornado, all this. So like, we're we're tricking ourselves. We're being superficial, thinking we're never going to die. When it's undefeated, son. Like everyone's going. So now what I do is I will go into meditation and think about people dying and put myself there. I'll go through the emotions. I'll start crying. I'll do the whole spiel because. The way I'm like people, oh, why would you want to live that? Like, because guess what happens when you come out and they're not dead? It feels great, but it strengthens you up. It's like, it's going to happen. It's going to, it's regardless, it's going to happen. Meditate on the shit, understand the shit. So when it does happen, yo, can you hear me? You're good. Yeah, you're good. Shit, I just like went set. What happened? You're so good. when it does happen, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't hear myself, but when it does happen, it, uh, you're kind of more ready for it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's not as, it's not as such a surprise. Your, your system is not as shocked because you're training for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's what all the meditations, all the you know, all these people talk about, especially the Stoic philosophy, is preparing for it because it's it's always going to happen. Like that's yeah. the number one thing is it's always going to happen. This death stuff, but and this Western culture, we just went so into our ego because that's all it dies to is ego. That's mm-hmm. it. Even when someone that you love dies, it's only your ego that's missing them. Otherwise, we're always together, always within each other. But it's our ego that capsulates and has us as different figures walking through Earth. So if you lose someone you love, they're still there. But our physical manifestation that we can't see anymore, we can't yeah. talk to our senses. We can't smell them. We can't see them. We can't feel them. We can't touch them is upset mm-hmm. and depressed. Mm-hmm. And we need to hold on because our ego is everything. So the more we even shed that and have those different ideas and thoughts, we can navigate through the world a lot more without taking everything personal. Like... My uncle passing away isn't just hitting me. Now, again, imagine how my grandmother, and if I see my grandmother taking it that way, how could I be a little, how could I take it in such a, oh, oh, oh. But that's me. I came through a different style of life also. Some people are just very into emotions and stuff. But just the way, like, the thing I deal with is anger. Yeah, because, like, the way I would deal with it, like, I would just get angry. Now it's much more of a a loose thing. Mm -hmm. So that's how you do it, like, the un- my uncle, my fir- the first time when my uncle passed away back in the day, that was the hit. That put me into a downward spiral. You got to make a choice, make a change. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it's literally preparing for it. Like I yeah. prepare for death every day by meditating and re- going to Ram Das and going to the Bhagavad Gita and going to scriptures because I'm preparing for death. Like it's going to happen. Question. And I'd like to go do some gangster shit after this life, not just become another human that has to deal with this nonsense, to be honest. All right, I have a question on that then. Do you do that like when you meditate on a daily basis? Do you do it for yourself and then everyone on the ride, like wide reach that like connects to your life? What do you mean? Or do you just do it? So like when you were talking, I was thinking of something right. And like this, this is like when, uh, when my great grandma passed, mm-hmm. right? I knew that was coming. Like we knew she, she lived in assisted living. She was just a badass her whole life. Like didn't want to come home. She was like, no, 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 I'm not coming home. Like, I'm not going to live with you. You're my daughter, like to my grandma or whatever. And, uh, then one day she's 103 and she just calls my grandma's like, I need to come home. Mm-hmm. And that was just like, all right, she knows. Mm-hmm. So, and we've all been preparing for it. Cause she had cancer multiple different times, beat that shit like a beast. Um, but we, we knew, we knew it was coming. Like you could tell, like she was finally like kind of, she was slowing down quite, quite fast and, uh, preparing for that. It, it messed. The only reason like why I got super emotional after was like the way it happened was, uh, my mom had called me and then she was like, Hey, Nana said she needs to talk to you. And it was like 10 o'clock at night and I was sleeping. So I was in the military. Jojo was pregnant with Arlo, our first kid. And, uh, I talked to her and I was prepared for this moment and I just got on there. She couldn't really say anything. And I was just like, no, no, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to, everybody's going to be okay. You're like, it's time for you to rest. Like, cause she was always taking care of everybody. I mean, she was just, she came from that era of just like, just taking everything on. And then literally got a call at five in the morning when I woke up, she's gone. And I was like, it hit me, but I was able to like go about my day. Like I cried through or whatever, but I was good. My homie Henry, my like brother, like Henry, you know, at the beginning of last year, it was just boom. And I never thought, never once have thought about my homies dying. None. 
just I just never just never not now just doesn't cross my mind so that hit me and dude I was I mean you know this I was dealing with the repercussions of that shit till recently like my whole drinking damn near every single night and all that stuff like I was in I was just in the spiral of things like I was yeah getting shit done but internally on the back end like I was I was all jacked up for a long time um so I'm asking like do you do that on that on that side of things like do you go hey i'm gonna die someday like this is this is the life and i need to live it and then do you branch that out to like your homies uh you know people that are special like obviously mom dad like all that stuff or is it just like the immediate people close to you you mean like do i meditate on everyone dying yes no it's um literally just like my mom my dad my brother mm -hmm. because if i can go through that no offense if i had a phone call you died i'd feel terrible i'd come over there and do what i could i'd even try to be there for the kids and stuff but yeah yeah no i, I get next to my mom you know what i mean so that's yes. that in that yeah. sense so it's to me it's like and not just that but the more i kind of do that by learning scriptures from mystical okay. i don't even like to call it religious but mystical ways because it gives you other ideas of what all this is these dimensions the world like if we only look at bitcoin business uh fitness and, and, and we're living in this world realm only where everything can be taken from you. you're living from the material world where everything can be taken because it doesn't really exist everything we actually need is right here the rest we just built we have air to breathe we have the water to drink we have plenty of food we even have shelter the rest we're just pridefully competing against each other to create the next big thing whatever it is you know so it's like the more i take in these religious scriptures or whatever you want to call them i'm just getting different ideas that like i don't even it's it's getting closer or uh whatever it is but it's like an understanding that like this isn't this is just a game this is a dream of it this is part of it there's consciousness to everything this is a waking consciousness you have consciousness when you sleep you have the middle consciousness in between both states you have the consciousness of everything you know, drugs can alter your consciousness. There's other ways other than this that we're always in, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and it just eases you up to that. Like, because everything is because even like I think about when you say homies, I don't see everyone every day, honestly. So it's like if someone goes, even with my uncle, I didn't see him every day. I saw him a week before he passed, which was great. It was us saying goodbye to each other. But that's even less of a way to, to feel. I see my parents every weekend. So mm -hmm. to lose them or my brother, that I don't know what would happen. But I thought about that the other day. If I lost my brother, it'd be like, I don't know. Because it's like, you, you know, even when you do all this preparation stuff, it's uh, like, there's, now. yeah, there's like this story by um one of these monks or whatever that like he lost a son. And he tells everyone about the illusion and everything like that. And he's crying and everything. And one of his followers is like, how could you cry when you know it's an illusion? And he said, it's the greatest of illusions to lose a kid. Like we, it's the understanding that it's still all part of the game. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's fucking easy. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. mean you just sit there and go, "Oh, lost a kid." Like it doesn't. Yeah. It's it's still gonna hurt. Like, but that's the point. At least we can understand. Like, hey, it's an illusion. The sense you don't get so encapsulated in it, and then just live in that trauma of me, me, because that's what it come. Look what happened to me, 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 me. Yeah, you know, and these scriptures and shit just give you a different idea than everything you grew up around, hmm. at least for me. Hmm. So that's the way I kind of do it that I prepare for everything because what else? That's the way I look at it. like if you always are just so focused, hyper focused on said topic in this material world, mm -hmm. things can be taken real quick. And then that's usually when we have those regretful things. I wish I focused more on this or this, but. You know, we're all trying to do something in life. That's why I just try to balance it out. Like, put a little more God godly th scriptures, thoughts, and ideas like that. Even if it's only 10 minutes of meditation in the morning, 15 minutes, just to block out every other thing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Get with God a little bit. Because mm -hmm. that's, to me, I'm, like, fortifying my shit. I'm looking for the God within. The God guru self is all the same. You put that, that peace within. The world's always going to be chaotic. Chaotic is everywhere. But you're trying to create the... um. Uh, the peace within the chaos like everything has that yin yang yeah. fixture to it you know yeah, positive and negative charge but you could stay that that middle shaking one so that would ion. your would your tip kind of like with all of that then be like because obviously like we're not pushing religion like he's not saying god in that sense like it's more so like you said that inner peace would you say because i i like how you brought up you know the fit like the fitness industry people like us who are just trying to learn and be the best coaches we can be each and every single day 
uh, or, you know, skateboarders. It's all they think about skateboarding, skateboarding, mm. skateboarding, skateboarding, skateboarding. That's all they do. That's all they do. All they do. do you think it's a, a wise tip to be very conscious about the time you are taking away from that and spending it to find that inner peace, whatever it may be for said self? Yeah, like, I it's mean, it's very important. Like, would you say oh, it's yeah. like, yeah, T- to me personally? Mm hmm. And I'm not telling everyone how to live, really. I just suggestions. But honestly, it's the it's the That's most because because guess what's definitely going to happen to everyone, our ego at least, and then our physical body is going to die. Mm-hmm. If you identify solely with that, if I identify as Lou, the kid who loves, lives in Upper East Side Manhattan in a fucking posh looking apartment and sit, you know, and then guess what happens when I have to go back to work or I leave this apartment? I'm gonna fr- oh, oh oh you know. Or if you identify with the skater, if you get injured again, you're freaking the fuck out. You identify with any of these things so wholeheartedly, you lose it. So it's like, yes, I think the best way to do it is go back to this, form that piece. So when shit happens, you're ready for it, really. Like, you know what I mean? And the way I look at it, too, you're dancing. Like, hey, I'm over here powerlifting today. Now I'm over here dancing literally and then i'm yeah. over here meditating i'm over here reading some books and i'm over here watching the sopranos i'm over here fucking like i'm over here doing drugs like you know what i mean you're just doing it all have fun don't be the person like when you are the person doing drugs you're the drug addict you're not having yeah. fun anymore when you're the person who's fucking you're the sex addict you're actively older you know when you're fixated on sense gratification on always needing some objects to, to fill our needs mm-hmm. objects get taken you know what i mean so the best way, if you're going to meditate, you're going to journal, You just read some scriptures. Instead of sitting down and watching Netflix all day, go learn. Like, there's some gangster stories in that bitch. If you like learning about, like, uh, what's the new thing? The Tinder guy tricking all these bitches. Tinder swindler. Yeah, chin, this Tinder guy. Yeah, like, if you're really that interested, son, there's the most gangster fucking stories in the Bhagavad Gita. Oh I mean, it's a fucking, a god is talking to a prince about going to war against his own family. The prince is like, oh, I'm over here. What do you want me to do? And that's within a whole story called the Mahabharata. Then you got Genesis. Then you got like this, the, the Tao Te Ching. Like there's so many gangs, the whole story about Buddha. There's so many gangster stories about this shit that people don't give a fuck about because we care about money and distraction. I love that's that you it. like dive into different realms of it too. Like you're not hyper-focused on like one specific thing. Because that's what we were talking about earlier with these motherfuckers pushing religion. Push. Cap that under that <laughs> lowercase r religion. That's that, Ooh. that's that like, why? Why? Why are you so adamant about me being religious? Because that's not the word of God. The word of God is embodying it. It's not telling everyone else what to do and then taking their fazuls and living in a fucking mansion. That's Rice's Gemstone shit. That is pimping God. We don't play that. That's coming on my fucking podcast and trying to promote it. Yep. We don't we, we don't, don't pimp God. You want to go, mm-hmm. it's everywhere, baby. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's that's why I like that's, and because they yeah. all really say the same shit. It's just our human mind that is also perceiving things. That's something we that's, can't forget. Yeah. Religions were created by the human mind. Yes. You know? God was in this thing and we had to figure it out because we didn't have the distractions we have now. So what we had were people sitting down and figuring this out. Mm-hmm. You know, cave if you look at cave drawings and all these mystical um depictions Mm-hmm. way back before we kind of even had language it shows the same symbolism of many religions so we yeah. always had these wild ideas it was just religion explaining it mm-hmm. now we have technology and money our new religions so we don't go here what we do is give me medication give me a distraction to get away from this and let me just keep producing for our culture the world we live in now and that's why i go where i go mm-hmm. because if we're so focused on that i don't know i, don't I love know. i love where that went because that's uh i think that's a very solid conversation that is not i don't hear it heard or i don't hear it enough so yeah what was you trying to push things yeah i i think that it well and the whole like multiple like perspectives or having your own perspective on it and i think that comes from like you said like looking into multiple different ways of how humans have thought and how others have process things because then Mm -hmm. you get it you actually get a chance to then like be like okay how could i use this in my own life or whatever the case may be and if you're still here listening you're a ride or die because that was a that's some heavy conversation to start with dude (laughs) that was low-key that's my style right there what you up the floodgates you're gonna stick around we know it that's how we love you nah for real though because that was that was some heavy stuff and like i said i think it share this with somebody if, if you're if you're still here listening and 
uh, create a conversation around it because I think it it is very important to talk about it more because I think a lot of people would be a little more comfortable with things if we did. Yeah. You know, that's just why my, not? My why opinion. not bring it to the table more? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it doesn't like, have to be this like taboo thing. I think that's like you want to talk about it and people are like. Whoa. Because it was so, I think that's because it was so forced for so long in such a negative connotation, especially huh. look at the dominating religion, at least, excuse me, at least in the Western culture is very like, um, smite me, oh, smiter. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's yeah. not what God is. God isn't like, you better, you better obey me. Otherwise it doesn't work that way. And if you pump, if you're telling people that's how God is, you're only perceiving it through your human rational thinking mind that has judgments and does, and has conditional love. That's not God. You st- like that's not what it is, I think at least because I, I never met. He, it's also lose opinion, it. so like yeah. But <laughs> if you're telling people like if you don't believe in my yo like oh Steve Weatherford oh yo you talk bad about my God and you pass out on stage ha ha like, yeah, yeah that's real godly like it might yeah, be yeah, might die be, a hammer bro lose opinion it might be lose Please. opinion but I like go, that. go hang across from your friggin <laughs> from your uh, your <laughs> ear again bro. tell everyone how religious you are please. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, that was some good stuff. Um Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. That's right. Favorite skate trick, Lou. What are your favorite skate trips? Skate tricks. Give me three. Okay. Give me three. Three? All right. Yeah. Um, it could be anything too. It could be it could be uh, bowl, vert, street, yeah. any any anything. All across the these just because I what I remember growing lighten, up that I like the mood up. Yeah. And, and doesn't yeah. mean I can do these. <laughs> no, 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 okay? no, 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 no. That's what I'm but, fuck that. I just favorite yeah. trick, bro. Favorite trick. Airwalk? Oh, so sick. like on you a, remember the air walk? like a like on like a, a Rodney like Mullen air walk, like on a vert, like where you come up. You could be on a vert, or, yeah. If you're okay, good enough, you could be off a quick. Like you just go up and you walk in the air and you put the board back I've on. I love that. Like, I've done those at the state fair here in Minnesota, like with the third layer team off like the little mini lawn tramps. We've done those yeah. before. <laughs> those yeah. are fun. Um, dark slide. Oh, dude, I've gotten fucking worked trying those before. There was one day <laughs> I forgot. We, where were we? I think we were at some. Oh, we we're at Mendota Skate Park actually over here, and they have this one little <clears throat> flat bar on the ground. So funny because like all the homies were like, let's try to dark slide because it was like when skate came out. You know, you could like press the button, you catch it perfectly upside down, you fucking mm-hmm. slide, and just do a perfect one. It doesn't work that way, bro. It doesn't <laughs> not work that way. <laughs> yeah. Especially doesn't work like it's very easy doing it, like when I'm them trek decks. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> not yeah, little, 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 little decks. Yeah, it's, it's easy on yeah. that. <laughs> okay, okay, third one, and then um. Gee, I don't know, because so it's like definitely missing a ton. But maybe a 360 flip. Yeah, it's like a good tray flip. Yeah, like a 360 flip. We'll go with a 360 flip. Yeah. I just landed a pretty Or, but you know what? Yeah, 360 flip. We'll go with 360 flip. Because yeah. I like this. Uh, there's so many great. Well, like, that's dope about skateboarding. Do whatever you want with it. I know, right? You know what I mean? So, you do, so you would flip the fucking thing. You take it out. You throw it around your body. Like, you do so much gangster shit with it. But so amazing. just go with the 360 flip. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just, I just got a couple of those yesterday. I was actually, when I was skating yesterday, because, like, we have that the contest coming up in April, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, I've been practicing, like, putting runs together and shit. And I got, I got some spicy shit coming together, man. I'm telling that's you. What's up. Yeah, that's dude. What's up. And it's, I just, I don't know. I think it's just fun to skate that way. I'll, I'll list my three tricks, but I think like if you've never done it and you like skating a park, I think you should try to link as many tricks together as you can and like make that a day. It doesn't have to be like your hardest tricks, right? Like consistency is like a huge thing for me. So like being able to just like link a bunk, bunch of tricks together on different obstacles, like doing a trick, you know, you can do, but on multiple different things around a park and linking that together, flowing it. That has been probably one of the most beneficial things I think I have done for my skating. Cause it's like when I sit there and think about it and like the days I remember being younger and like, you just have like a week where it was just like, Hey man, what are we skating? Flat bar sesh. Hey man, what are we skating? Flat bar sesh. Hey man, what are we skating? Flat bar sesh. Right. Cause you're, you're trying to learn, you're trying to learn, you're trying to learn, you're trying to learn all these new tricks, right? You just want to keep learning. But then all of a sudden next week, it's okay. Let's skate the uh, let's skate the down rail, man. All right, cool. Then you go to do like your board slide. You get it, but then you go to like dive into like these other tricks that you just learned on the flat bar, and you have no clue how to transfer them over to this down rail because you just haven't taken the time to like skate that down rail in that sense. So, being able to skate around the park, link this stuff together, it's really 
brought my skateboarding, I think, to a different level because it's then the days I do to zone in on one trick. Like I just did a post on it. When I learn a trick, I don't just I don't just land a trick once unless like it's a banger trick. Like you're out there grinding to get like a a, a clip, and it's like all right, you did this. You're in the streets. You don't you don't got to do it again unless you landed it fucked up. You really want to do it again. But like most of the time, like sometimes it happens where you learn a trick in the streets just because it works on a spot. But you get worked and worked and worked. You're not just gonna keep back and going to do it. But when I'm in a park and I learn something. I make myself do it no less than three times. Now my reasoning behind this is every time I haven't, I go back to do the trick and it takes me forever to land it. Every time I have done this, I'm able to go back and do the trick pretty within three tries, like pretty damn quick. And then all of a sudden it's just faster and faster. Now it just happens every try. Unless some just like stupid shit happens with skateboarding and I can fall on a fucking board sign ollie sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's skateboarding shit happens. Um, but I think that's like a huge tip for me when it comes to that is like with trick learning and stuff is make mm -hmm. yourself do it and then start to link that trick into like i was saying the shit that you're just skating around doing but on that note my favorite three tricks would have to be just like a fat just like a fat kick flip bro like jake hayes remember when i had him on and stuff like he mm -hmm. has the most amazing looking kick like when you just can kick a kick flip and it comes way the hell up and your legs are like bah, and you catch it like on anything, flat ground, over something, off something. I just think it looks so sick. I think that's just... Mm -hmm. And two, I swear I get worked on kick flips more than I do on tray flips. So I have mad respect for people who have like a really consistent, really good kick flip. Because I think it's like one of the tricks you learn first is a flip trick, besides like a pop shove it. But it's also like one of the ones that just can be so inconsistent if you don't practice it enough. So I have mad respect and I just like the look of it. Um, yeah, kick flips a gangster. Yeah, dude, I'm, like, there's you can't go just wrong because and you know, and or I can you know, set up with like a heel flip too because like, you've got a gangster heel yeah. flip like Neen Williams or something like you're nasty. Like, but you know, like the number one move that's always requested by people that don't skate that do when they see flip. someone on a skateboard do a kick flip. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If people that don't skate and <laughs> see someone on a skateboard do a kick flip, that's why they had that thing kick on like, the barracks where like pro skaters would drive around. They're like, do a kick flip like out the window yeah. and stuff, and then they yeah. give kids boards and all that. But yeah, yeah. I'll be like, yeah, just jump. Just jump. jump. <laughs> Do an air just walk. Jump. <laughs> just how about you walk without the assistance of your vehicle? <laughs> Go for a jog. Oh Tell me, what am I, a show pony? A what am I, a trick pony over here? Just Screaming at me in the middle of Manhattan like streets to do it. Just driving around the city, just yelling at people out the window. Hey, while we're just being that narcissists in basically. our car, driving around. Hey, <laughs> do this. Oh my god! Uh, you got a kickflip. What else? Uh, so kickflip. Uh, next one would have to be a front crook, front crook, mm. and like Jamie Foy, hands down, he's the homie too. Like Jamie Foy is a really good dude. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't follow Jamie Foy, go follow this guy because he he's yeah. he's he's so nice. Like he's just genuinely like one of those pros you meet, and you're like he's the, he's just cool. And then like obviously like having homies who are homies with him, like he's actually like just the homie mm -hmm. too, like that. And his front crook is mean, bro. Like. I've seen front crooks, like a lot of good front crooks, but his got me juiced on him and I just started doing it more and more and more again. And like just the pinch, like just the look of like just pinching and just like tweaking it to the side and you're just on long rails on a box like that. And like also taking that to a fakie, I think is like super sick. That's like my second favorite trick. Third and final favorite trick. What would be, you know what? Give me just a long a long crazy back 50 on like a rail like that that is insane remember when we watched kyle walker's part and he that yeah. last trick that back 50 he did on that just crazy long rail that just one i'd love to do it and it looks fun and two it's like i know how hard it is to hold that like so i'm just like yeah because like I love watching the technical skating. Don't get me wrong. Like you could do a tray flip back crook. I'm like, damn, that was sick as hell. Like that's dope. Like, but if I'm going to, if I'm going to pick something from a video that stood out to me, it's those things. It's definitely those things for sure. Cause like you could, like, I don't know. There's so, there's, like you're saying, it's so different. Cause for me, I think it goes to like the style of the skater too. Right. Cause like that's stuff that I would more likely do, or I would do. That's stuff that I do do, right? Like, that's the stuff I would or do do. Then I look at, like, somebody who 
like my homie Jasper from third, he's a very technical skater. Jonathan Reese, very technical skaters, right? They can flip in and flip out of tricks. Now I can flip in starting to flip out, but I just don't, it's not my cup of tea. I'd rather go fast, go big and just do fast and long tricks, right? Um, they're the opposite. And I'm sure if you ask them what their favorite tricks is, or tricks are, the tricks is, the tricks are, there would be, there would be definitely more technical tricks in there. Maybe, I mean, that's just my assumption, but I think it does come down to that. Cause it's like, I'm not going to go pick something like, yeah, it looks dope. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying those crazy technical tricks don't look crazy because they do. But for me, it just comes down to like more like, a, I would like to do that. And the other ones I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> like, but yeah, those are those are my three. Those are my three favorite tricks. I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'm gonna try to. What did you say? You said airwalk. You said 360 flip, and you said dark slide. Dark slide. Damn it! That's like the only one I might not be able to get. I was gonna say I want to try to like film them and just like have them playing in the background while the podcast is playing. Um, do it. Just I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Yeah, I can just yeah, put the just... falls, bro. I'll, yeah, that's what we'll do tomorrow. Let me, let me let me put down a little note. That's what we'll do. <laughs> That's something we'll do. Hey, and if uh, if if you're still here rocking with us, listen to what our what our favorite tricks are and stuff. Uh, give us some insight into into some things that you know maybe we could we could do uh, with the podcast to up the production, bring you guys some more flavor. I mean, I if I have to say anything, I think me and Lou just we we do what we do, and y'all love it. So thank you. Notice how I don't even ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lou's like, no, nah, we're, we're doing what we do, bro. That's, that's all that matters. Oh, fuck. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh. Wait, wait. So it was Eventually, fun. people are going to like it. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do this, though, this week. We'll see. Because I have so much more time to skate and stuff. I could I could try. So we got we got air walk. I don't know where the hell I'm going to try that trick. Oh, lo- third layer. They have like, damn, I'm going to like ollie into it. That's going to be weird, bro. Dark slide, bro. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely definitely bust it on that. I think you'll be able to do it. Well, yeah, we'll see. You know what? It's been years. Now that I have a little bit more understanding of my board and stuff, we'll see what happens. And you said tray flip, but I'm pretty sure I literally already have videos of everything that I listed, dude. When? Oh yeah, because you can't really skate at all right now because of like, is it snowy there? Yeah. No? Oh. So you can skate out? It's weird as fuck. Yesterday it was 50 degrees. Two days before it was like 10. What? Really? I guess that's dude, that's low-key how it was here too. It was like 45. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah. nope, psych. <laughs> Going back yeah. down. So. Dang. And then back 50. Well, do you skate then like to like around right now since it's not snowing? Sometimes, yeah. Like, like, uh, not, like fun. if a day off at the gym, I'll, I'll skate around Manhattan. I'll go to Penn and stuff. I mean, I'll go to um, Central Park and all that. Sometimes I'll skate to my client across Manhattan, you know. That's tight. I, w- <clears throat> I wish it. I wish I was able to do that at least still. Like, because it's like, I'm not taking my board out. So there's salt and snow everywhere and ice. Yeah, but at, least so you got like, the, at least you got the park. Yeah, no, no, exactly. But I just miss still, like waking up. Like, that was like one of my. Oh, that's happen out. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my go-to <laughs> things, dude. It's just like waking up and birds chirp and i'm on my board cruising like that's like dude when i was working and i was skating to work i would show up sweating profusely my day started and and i would just but it was I'm the best the way day. to start today like <laughs> yep. yeah music going just skating through manhattan just jiving everyone else was like i gotta go to work and i'm like i'm going to work you know yep, yep, yep. And like, it <laughs> was dope. Like, yeah, like, it was i gotta dope. go skate let's go yeah, it's exactly. That's what it was. Like, I have to go to work, but I'm skating on the way, so I'm not even thinking about the work. Yeah, yep. And by the time I got there, my endorphins, I was so jacked up because, like, I'm sprinting, basically. Mm-hmm. That, like, yeah, I was, I would literally, I would be profusely, when I tell you profusely sweating, like, my whole shirt was drenched in yeah, sweat. Yeah. Drenched by, before I even start working, but it was like, fuck Especially it. the way you this skate. I my mean, life you just is. go hard. Like, that's what I'm there. saying, yeah. dude. Yeah. I based, and it would take me like 15 minutes to get three and a half miles in Manhattan. Like, it's. Dude, I'm so hyper printed. AZ. We can actually fucking skate yeah. together and shit, dude. I know. We didn't get to skate when you were here the last time, bro. We can go fucking cruise. <laughs> yeah, you had a geez. busted ankle. Let's go. I forgot. I honestly forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, when you came here, I was fresh out of ankle surgery and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I was still on crutches. That's going to be dope. Yeah, man. I was just looking back at that, dude. You know what's crazy? Look how far I've come. That was only not even, it's not even a year ago yet, G. It's not even a year ago. I had, That's crazy. I had surgery wow. like last March 2nd, bro. And you're skating like crazy. You were on crutches. They said I wasn't going to be. And you're about to compete. They said, <clears throat> yeah, they said I wasn't going to be able 
to be back taking impact for like eight months. And that would have been yeah. What March, April, May, June, July, right. September, October, November. Not the case, baby. Not the case. Get out there and strike. That's turn. crazy. They always say <laughs> stuff like that. They always seem to be wrong, huh? Uh, yeah. The power of the human mind. Yep, 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 yep. That's pretty interesting. But uh, I think uh, I think we'll leave it at that, Lou. You got anything you want to yeah. take people off with? No. Nah. Hey. Not really. I mean, go to God. Yeah. If you want to <laughs> have more conversations like this, I suggest you reach out to Lou. Because as you heard, I was also asking him for advice on these things. So he has... He has some insight. If you want to chat with me on some skating stuff, and if you want to skate, hit me up and always know Holla. that we are keeping skaters Holla. skating.